Hi everybody, welcome back to Steve's Garage. Today I'm going to be installing a forged turbo inlet pipe on a Mark IV 1.8T. Before I get started, I do want to mention that this part does not fit well. It interferes with existing parts on the engine and requires some cutting and modifications in order to fit exactly right. I want to keep this video to just installation, so if you want to see my issues with this, check out my other video here. The last thing I want to mention is that I did this install with the coolant hard pipe and a couple hoses off the car, so you're not going to see those in the way like they will be for you. That being said, this will still be a great how-to, and I do touch on how the turbo inlet pipe interfaces with those parts. You honestly need more patience than tools to do this job, but let's go over what you'll need. Turbo inlet pipe, screwdrivers, pliers, I use these specific hose clamp ones, 5mm allen driver, the longer the better, ball end if you can, you'll see why in the video, 7mm socket, and a ratchet. Your first step would be to remove the intake and MAF, but as you can see, that's already removed on my car. From there, you can move on to all the peripheral stuff, N75, hockey puck, diverter valve, take all that off. Then move on to this little vacuum line. Normally with these Etiker style clamps, I can just put a screwdriver in there and break it. Sometimes I need a pair of pliers. That wasn't working. I don't know why this was putting up such a fight, but I also didn't want to destroy the stock inlet pipe, and I didn't want to ruin the elbow on the vacuum line. So I messed around with it a bit, but I got it all apart, and I didn't break anything in the process. There's a small single bolt, that 5mm Allen, that holds the turbo inlet pipe to the turbo itself. You can see it here, and this is why I said you need that longer Allen driver, preferably the ball end. If you have one like that, you can go from above. If you don't, you gotta go from underneath because there's not really a way to go from above unless you have that longer bit to give you that reach. There's no good angle to film this, and you really don't need to watch me removing a bolt, but once that bolt is out, you should be able to gently wiggle the turbo inlet pipe back and forth, and it should come off the turbo fairly easily. It's unlikely that you would damage the turbo removing this, but you should just be a little careful because the last thing you want to do is turn this project into a turbo replacement. Here's just an additional angle of where that bolt is on the inlet pipe. The last thing you have to do is remove this vacuum line. I still have it. I have nothing deleted or rerouted on my car. Yours might be different, but if it's bone stock, you got to remove this, and then you can take the turbo inlet pipe completely off the car. If you want, you can disconnect these two pieces. There's a little clip, pops right out, and you can disconnect it. But as you can see, I didn't really feel the need to. I don't think you have to either. You can just pull it all out as one piece. Before installing the turbo inlet pipe, you just want to make sure that you have that vacuum line that goes to the combi valve reconnected. It's going to be a pain to reach it once it's installed, so do that first. This may not be a thing you have to do if you deleted this or messed around with your vacuum lines. Again, I didn't, and so I've got to hook it back up. Then you want to install the hose clamp on the turbo side of the inlet pipe. I've got my clamp on the bottom side and then the hose clamp facing the back of the car. I found that easiest to get under the car and tighten it that way. You can face it any way you want, it doesn't matter, but that's what I found easiest to do. Just a quick side note, before you install the inlet pipe, it's a great time to check your turbo for any shaft play. You've already got some parts off, so if there's a problem, you're at least part of the way there to replacing it. Moving on to the installation of the pipe itself, it should be simple. Slide it on the flange of the turbo, tighten your hose clamp down, you're all set. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You can see here that I have the heater hoses removed and the coolant hard pipe removed. I was replacing these items and decided to do the inlet pipe while I was in there. If you wanted, you could remove the heater hose. That's not really bad, and it does get it out of your way. The coolant hard pipe is way too much work to remove just to install the inlet pipe. As I mentioned earlier, I want to keep this video strictly to how to install the pipe and keep my issues with it to that other video. That being said, the interference with the hard pipe and the heater hose is an installation problem, so I do want to touch on that quickly here. You can see in this clip that towards the back of the heater hose, it contacts the inlet pipe and then the coolant hard pipe also contacts the inlet pipe. I even bent the coolant hard pipe a little bit to get it to fit a little better, and it still is contacting it. In addition to that, the hard vacuum lines that are up and around the combi valve also contact the inlet pipe. I had to bend those a bit to get it to fit better, and you can see the little piece of heater hose I stuck on there so that if it contacts, it's not gonna rub through the inlet pipe. Once you've got the fitment all sorted out, you can move back up top to connect your N75, diverter valve, and hockey puck. Unfortunately, that's also going to be a problem because of the shape of this thing. I ended up needing to trim all these attachment points because nothing would fit properly unless I did. Again, my car is basically stock with the vacuum and breather system, so the amount you have to trim, where you have to trim, it might be different for you than it is for me. I also ended up using a section of my own hose for the top of the diverter valve because where it sits is too high to use the stock hose. The last problem I had was installing the MAF and intake back to the turbo inlet pipe. The turbo inlet pipe is too long for my setup, even though it worked fine on the stock setup. I ultimately ended up trimming the turbo inlet pipe so that it would fit properly with the intake and the MAF. Not something I wanted to do, but it's what I had to do. Your situation might be different depending on the intake that you have or the stock airbox or whatever's going on. So again, do what you have to do to make it fit. 
So that about wraps up installation of the turbo inlet pipe itself. If you're watching this before you've purchased or installed yours, I highly suggest you check out the other video where I cover the issues that I had with it. If you're watching this video and you installed a non-forged turbo inlet pipe, leave a comment. Let us know what you used, how your experience was. If there's a better brand out there to buy, I'm sure we'd all love to know. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I try to answer everybody. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching, everybody.